Check it out now, y'all. Nano Hub U Online Instruction. Hello, welcome to lecture four in week five. Uh, today we are going to talk about the scuterodytes as well as oxide thermoelectrics, spin sweepback, and resonant state. Some of the latest advances in thermoelectrics. So let's start with the scuterodyte. Scuterodytes were discovered in 1929. I guess this was a city in Norway where they, they, they discovered it. It has a cubic structure, lots of atoms, 32 atoms per unit cell with large atomic masses give you a low thermoconductivity. They have relatively high mobilities um, uh, with a good power factor. This is an example of uh, uh, cobalt antimonide scuterodytes. There are two empty sites for filler atoms, and this was uh, one of the uh, original uh, type of material system where Glenn Slack's idea of phone on glass and electron crystal for good thermoelectric could uh, be realized. The idea is uh, the voids uh, can host rattler atoms that scatter phonon moles, reduce thermoconductivity. The idea is that the backbone um, uh, the atoms uh, of cobalt and uh, antimonide form a good lattice and that's good for electron mobility. Um, here are some of the state-of-the-art ZT versus temperature for some of the um, uh, scuterodytes. This is from uh, uh, review by Sutman et al. You can see that they can reach ZTs uh, in this case uh, about 1.3 or so. Uh, some of the recent advances in uh, scuterodytes have been in multiple field scuterodytes. The work by a um, group at GM, Ji uh, Hui Yang, University of Washington, and Li Dong Chen. Um, by putting different type of filler atoms inside this uh, open fillings in the scuterodyte lattice, uh, they were able uh, to improve ZT from the values I showed you, 1.3, 1. so to multiple field one up to about 1.6. Uh, and the simple idea is uh, by doing multiple fillings, you don't change the power factor, uh, but you are reducing the lattice thermoconductivity, and that's what increases the, the ZT. Uh, Clath rates are another example of a complex uh, crystal structure. There are various types. Type 1 is the one shown here, uh, is an alkali metal or alkaline earth uh, with um, uh, silicon germanium or, or thin. Um, these are have very low thermoconductivity, glass-like thermoconductivities. Um, ZT is as high as 1.2 at 900 Kelvin uh, for barium, uh, gallium, uh, germanium has been um, uh, shown by Bertinini et al. Uh, there is lots of work by George Nolas and Peter Rogel's group. Um, uh, here are some of the thermoconductivity versus temperature uh, that are shown for um, uh, several materials, actually, bismuth telluride, lead telluride, uh, and others are here as well, but you see some of the um, uh, uh, class rates have low thermoconductivity. Um, Half-host half layers are alloys um, that are made of uh, titanium, zirconium, hafnium with nickel and tin. They have an uh, uh, open crystal structure when there is two nickel. This is a Hosler, which is a metal, uh, but a half Hosler, a small gap developed, so that's ideal for thermoelectrics. They have a high uh, power factor at high temperatures because of the heavy mass, they're mostly N type. Um, some ZTs have been demonstrated ZT of 0 0.7 at 700 Kelvin, 0 0.8.9 here, and another 0 0.7 here. What is the main reason people are interested in half hustlers? Is relatively easily synthesized, high melting temperatures, and chemical stability with essentially zero sublimination and near 1000 degrees C. So there is an active area of research uh, to develop these uh, for higher temperature models. Uh, now let's briefly uh, mention some of the exotic thermoelectrics. This is a very low temperature effect, condo thermoelectrics. Um, uh, so there are uh, measurements by Ben Tienel, uh from a couple of years ago in 2007 um, that uh, describe, uh, actually, uh, th this is the uh, iron antimonide material that at temperatures as low as 10 Kelvin, uh, the power factor could be 60 times larger than bismuth at room temperature. 
the, K, uh, the thermal conductivity is very high at these temperatures, so as a result, ZT is very low. But if thermal conductivity could be lower, the ZT will be um, quite substantial. The physics of this, I guess, is still under uh, investigation. Now let's spend some time on oxide thermoelectrics. If you take a conventional point of view, this B factor that I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, Chasmer and Stratton, um, you look at oxide, they are light atoms, so their thermal conductivity is high, and also usually they have poor mobility. So oxide should be hopeless as thermoelectrics. Uh, in 97, um, uh, Ichiro Terazaki demonstrated otherwise. Basically, he measured um, the thermoelectric property of sodium cobalt oxide, material with um, electrical resistivity, which is uh, five to 10 times larger than bismuthaluride at room temperature, still um, has a um, uh, Seebeck coefficient that is quite substantial. Um, 100 microvolt. At this type of conductivity, most metals are ten, have tens of microvolt Seebeck. This uh, generated a lot of interest, especially in Japan. Several families have been studied as a potential thermoelectrics. Um, uh, what is the crystal structure of uh, sodium chloride, uh, uh, sodium cobalt oxide? Um, there is a conducting uh, a copper oxide layer um, that is sandwiching uh, and an incomplete layer of randomly distributed uh, sodium ions with 50% site occupancy. The, the reason the large power factor happens, uh, several reasons are given and that's not uh, solved, uh, kind of completely solved. On one hand, Koshibaya and others mentioned about entropy of uh, uh, spin entropy and the fact that you have cobalt 3 plus and 4 plus states uh, and as electron moves in addition to the diffusion entropy carries a spin entropy. I will discuss about it a little bit. Um, Quite a few people, such as uh, uh, Sriram Shastri, have mentioned about correlation effect and geometrical frustration in the base lattice of each plane that play a role, and I will show a biograph about that as well. And finally, uh, uh, people such as David Swink mentioned that uh, the high Seebeck coefficient could be explained using standard band theory without any additional f new physics. There's also a paper uh, by uh, Kuroki and Arita, that the special shape of the valence band, which is called a pudding mold shape, uh, can give rise to this high conductivity and high Seebeck. Practically, uh, it's difficult to control the sodium compound. Uh, it evaporates high temperature and decomposes at 1100 Kelvin. So there are some material issues with the sodium cobalt oxide. Here is the notion of the spin entropy uh, the idea is um, if you have cobalt-3 and cobalt-4+, uh, uh, as electrons move from different sites, uh, because of the degree of uh, degeneracy is different, electrons uh, have a different uh, randomness, uh, so they carry certain entropy. This entropy is given by generalized Hake's uh, formula, which looks like, you know, Shannon entropy uh, type of thing, which has Kb over C, a log of population of uh, 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 states that are filled and a state that are empty with the degree of degeneracy on each state. Um, so this can explain the very high temperature limit, but as you can see in the text here in uh, Terazaki, what is not clear is what, um, how this high temperature limit is reached and why at temperatures significantly below high temperature limit we still see a large CPEC coefficient. Um, Terazaki has a very nice review article for the oxides. Um, and where he dis compares silicon cobalt oxide with strontium cobalt oxide, calcium, uh, and uh, bismuth strontium cobalt oxide. The key advantage is these conductive layers are now separated by different layers uh, of other materials. These are called sometimes natural super lattices. Uh, and these materials, uh, some of them have good ZTs, about one, again, is shown in this um, uh, graph. Um, and in this paper, um, Terazaki uh, em emphasizes that even though the origin of the high Seebeck for sodium cobalt oxide could be debated, for some others, really, this spin entropy uh, contributes and needs to be taken into account. Uh, 
the issue of the geometrical frustration, uh, this is a paper by um, Kava Ang uh, at Princeton. They talk about anomalous Hall effect on the triangular lattice in sodium cobalt oxide. They measured the Hall resistance increasing linearly as well as a linear uh, uh, temperature increase uh, in the in plane resistance. And these are actually matching the predictions by the theory of uh, Kumar and Shastri that discuss about um, a geometrical frustration. Uh, basically, um, uh, Kumar and Chastri uh, pointed out that when you have triangular lattice by um, going different path, this um, uh, odd uh, kind of uh, power to make a loop has an impact in terms of the sign of the hopping um, comparing to the uh, square lattice. And this uh, has a significant impact on the transport property, and that's where they discuss about the spin entropy as well. Um, on other oxides, uh, Kumoto's uh, group uh, in Nagoya has done a lot of work on strontium titanate oxide and strontium oxide. They have large band gap, very heavy effective mass, Seebeck at the room temperature quite high. It can be highly doped to 10 to the 21, uh, but still because of the high thermal conductivity, ZTs are quite low. Um, another of the oxide material that has been studied uh, quite significantly with uh, Mishitaka Otaki uh, is the zinc oxide uh, family. And uh, here is a review article where some of this uh, zinc aluminum oxide and aluminum gallium oxide shown to have ZTs at high as 0.6 at 1000 degree Celsius. Uh, so these are among the most promising oxide materials that um, are available at high temperature. Let me finish by um, uh, kind of a, uh, something new, which is called spin Seebeck effect. Um, if you have a material, one side hot, one the other side cold, in the standard uh, Seebeck uh, effect, charges uh, diffuse and you get a charge um, imbalance that give you a voltage. Um, the simplistic picture could be shown that uh, could also apply to a magnet material where a temperature distribution could change uh, the distribution of electrons of different spin. As a result, you have spin current. Um, in, uh, 90, uh, in 2008, Uchida et al. Uh, had a, a very interesting study that they took a, a nickel iron uh, magnetic material, um, put it under a temperature gradient as well as a magnetic field, um, uh, as a result, um, uh, there is uh, interactions between phonons and excitations of the magnetic moments, that is called magnons. Uh, this create a gradient um, in the magnetization across the sample. Um, uh, so, uh, and uh, so the dissipation of angular momentum is transferred uh, to uh, a metal, platinum in this case, uh, through an effect which is called spin pumping. And um, uh, this now across this a voltage can be measured. Uh, and this voltage uh, is an indication of this spin Seebeck effect. Um, so the, the reason this is developed, they also call it an inverse spin Hall effect. Um, Based on the similar argument, a giant uh, spin Seebeck has been observed for the case of indium antimonide. Uh, indium antimonide is not a magnetic, um, uh, magnetized material, but um, under a magnetic field, you can have Zeeman splitting of the energy levels. And at high enough magnetic field, uh, you also have a depletion region at the surface of the indium antimonide. Uh, but when you put a uh, platinum electrodes and you put a temperature gradient across this uh, with a magnetic field in plane, you can measure a, an effective Seebeck coefficient on the orders of tens of millivolt per Kelvin. That's the reason it's called giant Seebeck effect and that's kind of a new phenomena. Because platinum is highly electrically conductive, if you multiply that conductivity by the Seebeck, you get the, um, huge power factors. There are ideas that this can be used for some sort of power generation or cooling. Uh, but of course, um, as we saw in the case of thermoelectrics, what limits the cooling or power generation often is the uh, non-idealities. Uh, and this is something that uh, has not really been analyzed for a full device, what are the energy balances 
and non-idealities and what are the maximum delta t's and efficiencies. Um, one last uh, uh, topic that has been emerged recently through the paper by um, Jos Hermans in Science in 2008 is uh, by taking a lead telluride, a very good thermoelectric material, by adding uh, thallium uh, that form a resonant state. It formed this type, uh, sort of bell-shaped features in the density of states. You can improve ZT uh, from kind of typical values on order 0.8 to about 1.5. This um, resonant state thermoelectric has now been applied to other material systems as well. Um, there are questions um, about how much resonance, is it resonance state better or multiple bands and so on. Um, of course, it's a heavily dependent on what can be engineered and how we can bring the Fermi energy at the right position. Uh, any sharp features in the density of states is definitely good. Um, recently, um, uh, Jeff Snyder's group has a very interesting study of uh, uh, different materials. Um, this, this, in this case, is bismotelluride with thallium uh, with sodium doping, as well as uh, manganese lead telluride. Um, and what uh, this paper uh, I'm trying to emphasize is that, uh, first of all, they used uh, the same heat capacity for all of the data. So sometimes when you look at different papers, it's hard to compare the absolute ZTs because they have different assumptions. Here you, they use the same heat capacity. And their claim in this paper is alloy scattering and multiple bands are actually more effective uh, to improve ZT than the resonant state. Um, uh, so I guess in the same comparison, uh, we need to look at, uh, of course, the response of uh, Jos Hermans, or there are cases where this trend could be reversed. By the way, in the review article uh, by um, uh, on optimum bandwidth of thermoelectrics from Landor approach, uh, John Cook uh, and Professor Lundstrom, uh, when fundamentally they look at the balance between a resonance state and multiple bands, they had a similar conclusion that resonance states uh, should be more appropriate, uh, should give higher performance. Here is a summary of the lecture four. Uh, we discussed some of the uh, materials that have been a uh, subject of thermoelectric research in the last uh, 10, 20 years, scutrudites, clathrates, and half hauslers uh, oxide thermoelectric, very interesting physics due to the spin entropy and geometrical frustration of the lattice. Um, there is a new effect, spin Seebeck and giant spin Seebeck, uh, that is a low temperature effect, but uh, interesting physics of how temperature difference can introduce um, uh, different transport for different uh, electron spins. And finally, we made a couple of comments about resonance state and multiple band thermoelectrics. Um, uh, at the next lecture, lecture five, we will look at some fundamentals of thermoelectrics. This is basically the last lecture of the whole series. Uh, we go back to the fundamentals, and in lecture six, we review uh, what uh, you learned in this week. Um, look forward to see you at the next lecture.